Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist for the fifth Sunday of Lent. We especially welcome any visitors who are joining us in through spiritual, through live streaming and in spiritual communion. If you have not yet registered with our parish, registration forms are available in the information center in the atrium and can be filled out and dropped in the collection basket or turned into the parish office. At this time, please silence all electronic devices so we may pray without interruption. Announcements. Easter flower sign-up is today in the atrium after both masses. Flowers can be in honor of or in memory of loved ones. The cost is $20. Lenten Penance Services is March 20th at 6 p.m. in the main church. Donations of candy, can, candy and goodies are needed for the annual fe Easter festival. You can drop off in the atrium or the church office. Eucharist minister training is for new ministers is Thursday, March 21st at 515 in the main church. Join us for Stations of the Cross on Fridays throughout Lent at 5.30 p.m. in the main church. The fish fry will follow in the activity center. Where Jesus is, there will, is, there will his servants also be, giving thanks and praise to God. Please kneel in silence as we begin the celebration of our Mass. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the Lord be with you. With your spirit. And as we continue during this, these last days of this Lenten season, let us pause as we ask for the special gift of God's abundant mercy in our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made for their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. 
All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Well, Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. For the Father will honor whoever serves me. For I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Well, the crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. And he said this to indicate the kind of death that he would die. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. First of all, it's great to see everyone, as always, this morning. For any visitors, um, it's uh, an honor and privilege having you celebrating with us today. And for those joining us through live streaming, it's an honor to have you also joining us on this last week now of this Lenten season. Because right now we're like at the bottom of the ninth. Or we're at the last minute, at the fourth quarter, or we're lapping the one more lap around, and we'll be crossing the finish line. And so what I think the Scriptures are wanting to remind us of of these last days of this Lenten season is we need to look at ourselves and ask, are we just curious or are we convicted? And I say that because in that gospel reading today from John chapter 12, we heard that some Greeks, some Gentile believers wanted to meet Jesus. So they go to Andrew and to Philip, and Andrew and Philip are trying to see if they can get Jesus to um, get them together, and um, Jesus tells them that he doesn't have any more time because he doesn't need people who are curious anymore. Because what he's trying to get across is now we've got to be convicted. Convicted in what God is doing and what God is about in our lives. And so he launches into this lecture that we hear in the gospel reading. And at the heart of it, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, that doesn't happen. Well, then it just remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Now, the disciples were probably like, oh, where here he goes again, you know, what is he talking about? And so Jesus goes on to talk about what it means to serve and what it means to die to self in order to put God first in our lives, no matter what. Jesus' point is we have to be convicted in loving and serving him. We got it to do that means dying to ourselves. 
during this last week of Lent as we prepare to hopefully enjoy Easter blessings, as we look forward to growing in our relationship with the Lord, as we look forward to being forgiven of our sins, as we look forward to God being more a part of our lives, as we look forward to not just being curious but convicted, we have to look at the things that we're called to die to, what we're called to let go of. So I propose to be convicted means that we have to die to um, some of those staunch opinions we have. To be convicted, we have to die to some of those attitudes that we might have. To be convicted means we have to die to putting ourselves first. We have to die to that me, me attitude. We have to die to wanting the, my kids to be the way I want them to be rather than the way they are. We have to die to the idea of I want my life this way rather than the way that it really is, you know. We have to die to the idea of wanting to control every little thing around us. We have to die to letting money or things be more important in our lives. We have to die to those things or those habits that pull us down. If we're going to let the fruits of the Spirit continue to live in and through us, if you're going to be a good model and example for others, if you're going to be a happy person, if you want to have inner peace, then we have to die. We have to be convicted that we need to let go to release our will and let it be about God's will. And we're like, no, I don't want, you know, could we, there's got to be a little easier way, you know, in all of this. But I think what Jesus is reminding us is that it's not an easier way. But the thing about it is we die to ourselves all the time. We, we have things that we're convicted to and we're willing to sacrifice for it, and we just do it in everyday life. But those of you who play sports, you know, and your coach gets in your face, you know, and they're getting all over you because of what you did wrong, and then they make you run extra laps, or they make you do ex um, more exercises. What do you do? You run the lap, you know? You make the extra exercises, and you become convicted of what you're supposed to do, you know, whether you like it or not. We do it in school when our grades are not as well. And then our parents get us to be a little more convicted to studying and reading and being about what we need to do at school, and all of a sudden things start getting better. Those of you who are married or been married, you know how important it is to be convicted and dying to yourself constantly for the other one. At work, if your boss tells you, you know, that they're cutting your pay or cutting your hours and you're convicted about your job, then you do it. You make the sacrifice. And the same thing needs to happen to us spiritually. And that's what we're about today. Is what do we need to die to in order to be more convicted of what's most important in our lives? Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. So let's not waste our time by just being curious. But let us look at the things that we're called to die to in order to be more convicted that the Lord is the center of our lives. If you want to know somebody, what a convicted person looks like, those of you who are here at church every single Sunday, that's about being conviction, that's sacrificing. For those of you who help out at different ministries, we had all kinds of people um, sign up for the ministry sign up we had a couple weeks ago. And that's about being convicted. Those of you who pray, you know, on a regular basis, that's about being convicted. Going to the sacrament of reconciliation, that's about being convicted. Those of you that, that share your faith when you're at work or at school, that's being convicted. When you mm, accidentally say something you shouldn't, you know, and then you apologize right then and there to the people around you or to the Lord, you know, that's being convicted. When you're willing to make that hard decision to maybe not have this person or this thing to be so important in your life, that's about being convicted. Spiritually, we're called to constantly look. And what do we need to die to in order to be able to produce great fruit? So this last week of this Lenten season, in these last days, we've got to constantly look at 
how can we be of that grain of wheat that dies? What are those things that we need to let go in our lives so that we can not just be curious, but be more convicted in Jesus Christ? Let us stand now and as we continue to grow in our relationship with the Lord, to be ever more open to him, it is together that we profess. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. Confident that God will hear us, we offer our prayers for the church and the world. For the Spirit's guidance as the church seeks to follow Christ's humble service and for all the baptized who continue the mission of Jesus and produce a rich harvest for God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For lands affected by political instability, violence, and natural disasters, and for the release of all hostages in Nigeria, Haiti, and Gaza. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may approach the sacrament of reconciliation this week to purify our lives of all that separates us from God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, deacons, and religious who preach the new covenant of of God's love by their self-sacrificing ministry and for the flourishing in our families of God's love implanted in us at baptism. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking a home in the Catholic Church through the process of Christian initiation, that they may walk in God's light as he continues to enter their lives in unexpected ways, with opportunity to grow in love and make progress in the kind of love that we are all meant to live. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions that we hold in silence, and for whom this Mass is offered, for the repose of the soul of Doug Phillips, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Annunciation Catholic Schools students and all students here today, send your spirit upon them and fill them with your wisdom and blessings. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of nations, your people know your miracles. Hear the prayers of our hearts and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing. Oops. <laughs>
Please join us singing our offertory hymn number 405, Open My Eyes, number 405. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept such sacrifice as remains, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of His church. 
Hear us, Almighty God, in having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, is without end we acclaim. Today I'll be using the Eucharistic prayer number two for reconciliation. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about the, to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, a sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, 
with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other some sign of peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word. Please join in the First Communion Hymn, number 504, Unless a Grain of Wheat, number 504. Unless a grain of wheat, number 504. 
Join our second communion hymn, number 475, I Has Not Seen, number 475.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We invite our young boys and girls forward at this time for the Children's Bulletin. One for you and one for your father. Anybody else? Okay, any middle-aged people want to come for the bullet? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just want to remind you again of our penance service this week. So it is at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. So we'll have um, Father Jason from Starkville, Father Josh from the base who will be here for confession, so that will be at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. And also, this is the last week if you want to um, uh, give some money for the flowers toward the Easter flowers um, in memory of somebody or in honor of somebody, you can do so um, after Mass in the atrium. And then this week will be, well, we'll have Stations of the Cross also and um, the fish fry, and then the next week will be Holy Week, believe it or not. So it's crazy. It's all sneaking up on us. So let us just remember as we go into this week, it's not just about being curious about our faith, but it's what do we need to die to in in order to be ever more convicted in who we are called to be. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us go now as we continue to proclaim the gospel with our very lives. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 455, Again, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, number 455. 